Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisholm and today we'll be looking at the gross anatomy of the elbow joint. The gross anatomy of the elbow joint. The elbow joint is one of the joints of the upper limb. This is the elbow joint. It is one of the joints of the upper limb that is formed between the humerus or is formed between the arm and the forearm. That is, it is a joint formed between the humerus and the ulna and radius of the forearm. So, the elbow joint, you can look at the diagram we have here for the elbow joint. This is the, this is the humerus. This is the humerus. This is the articular surface of the elbow joint. So, in defining the elbow joint, the elbow joint is defined as a hinge type of synovial joint that is found between the distal parts or the inferior part of the humerus and the proximal part of the radius and ulna. So, it is a compound joint. The reason why it is a compound joint is because it has two articular surface. It is not like other joints that we have only one articular surface. The elbow joints have two different articular surfaces. That's why it is referred to as a compound joint. So, in seeing the articular surface of the elbow joint, the articular surface of the elbow joint is between the the trochlear of the humerus. This is the trochlear of the humerus and the trochlear notch of the ulnar bone. So the first articular surface of the elbow joint is the trochlear of the humerus and the trochlear notch of the ulna. And the second articular surface is the capitulum of the humerus and also the media head of the radius. So you see why it is referred to as a compound joint because of the two different articular surfaces. Then the articular surface also contains a joint capsule. It contains a fibrous joint capsule. And like I told us, this is a, a synovial type of joint. So in synovial type of joints, when we did joint classification, you remember that I told us that every synovial joint must have a joint capsule. So the joint capsule is a fibrous joint capsule, and the inner layer of the joint capsule is lined by a sheet of synovial membrane. So the synovial membrane lines the inner layer of the fibrous joint capsule. And the synovial membrane also produces the synovial fluid. The synovial fluid acts as a lubricant to reduce friction in the articular surface whenever this joint moves. So that is the main work of the synovial fluid. Then, the ligaments that are found in the elbow joint. We have about three ligaments that are found in the elbow joint. We have the first ligament, which is the ulnar collateral ligament. Ulnar collateral ligament. Before I go into the ulnar collateral ligament, I told us that ligament connects one bone to another bone. So, if ligament connects one bone to another bone, at least you should know that ligament helps, this ligament helps in the stability of the elbow joint. It helps it to make it more stable when they move. So the ulnar collateral ligament, like I said, it arises from the media epicondyle and extends to the ulnar process. So it covers this area. That is the ulnar collateral ligament covers this area. Then we also have the radial collateral ligament. The radial collateral ligament arises from the lateral, uh, from the lateral epicondyle. 
and extends to the head of the radius. So it covers this area. Then we also have the annular ligament. The annular ligament is, it mainly lies around here. So these are the three types of ligaments that are found in the elbow joints. So let's look at the next important uh, feature in the elbow joint, the movements. Elbow joints permit only two types of movements in one plane or in one direction. It permits only two types of movements in one plane or in, in one direction. You can see that the movement the elbow joint permits is flexing the elbow and extending the elbow. Flexing the elbow and extending the elbow. And you can see that the movement is in one plane. So the elbow permits only flexion and extension. For the movement, the muscles that move the elbow, we have the bicep brachii, the muscle that flexes the elbow. Eh? The bicep brachii is one of the muscles that flexes the elbow. The coracobrachialis muscle is also another muscle that flexes the elbow. And also the brachialis muscle flexes the elbow. Then coming to the extension of the elbow joints, the tricep brachii helps to extend the elbow. So, the blood supply to the elbow joint. The branches of the brachial artery supplies the elbow joint. So, the branches of the brachial artery, the brachial artery lies in the arm. So, the branches of the brachial artery surrounds the elbow joint to supply the elbow joint. Then, for the level of innervation or the nerve supply. The elbow is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve, the ulnar nerve and the radial nerve. So these are the three nerves that innervate the elbow. The musculocutaneous, the ulnar and the radial nerve. Then the buffer around the elbow joint. So the buffer around the elbow joint. I told us that bursa means a pouch or a sac-like space that is formed whenever a tendon is overlying a bone or whenever a tendon is overlying another tendon or whenever a tendon is overlying uh, the uh, other structures that are found around the joint. So a, a sac-like Pouch is formed. So that is what we mean by bursae. So, in the case of the elbow joint, we have three main bursae around the elbow joint. We have the intratendinous olecranon bursae. This one is found within the tendon of the tricep brachii muscle. Then we have the sub. Tendinous or the canon uh, This bursae is formed between the tendon of the tricep brachii and the olecranon process. Then we also have the subcutaneous or the canon uh, This bursae is formed between the uh, tendons and also the connective tissues there. So, the clinical or the clinical period of the elbow joints, we have the dislocation of the elbow. On a normal dislocation, whenever there is a force or whenever there is an accident around the elbow, around the elbow, the Elbow joints, the articular surface that is found between the trochlea of the humerus 
and the trochlear notch of the ulna normally dislocate or normally shift. And once it shifts, it may it causes pain, and not just pain, it may affect the ulna nerve because the ulna nerve passes across this ulna groove here. So it may affect the ulnar nerve. Then another type of uh, clinical case we have for the elbow joint is bursitis. Bursitis simply means the inflammation of the uh, bursa. Those three bursas that are found within the elbow. Inflammation of this bursa. And the inflammation of the bursa can be as a result of too much friction. Whenever there is too much friction on the space that is formed between the um, this bosom, whenever there is excess friction, or maybe whenever you keep your elbow at a particular place for a long period of time, it turns to cause pain, and from being uh, causing pain, swelling, it begins to swell and it become inflamed, it begins to accumulate force there. Then the third one is the avulsion of the media epicondyle. Avulsion of the media epicondyle, this media epicondyle here may whenever there is an accident, it may shift away from it may break out. It may break out from the humerus. And the implication of this is that the ulnar nerve pass through, pass under the media epicondyle, under the ulnar groove. It pass through the media epicondyle, under the ulnar groove, to move to the forearm. So whenever there is a situation like this, the ulnar nerve is tend to be injured. And injury to the ulnar nerve will cause paralysis of the muscles that the ulnar nerve innervates. So you know that the ulnar nerve innervates the muscles of the the intrinsic muscles of the hand. That is what the ulnar nerve innervates. So whenever there is this situation, it may cause uh, uh, loss of movement. Uh, on the intrinsic muscles of the hand. So, let me kind of do a recap of the elbow joint. I told us that the elbow joint is a joint, a hinge type of synovial joint from between the, from between the trochlea of the humerus and the trochlear notch of the ulna, the capitulum of the humerus and the radial head. So I told us that it is a compound joint. We went ahead to see the joint capsule, the fibrous joint capsule, the synovial membrane and the synovial fluid. We also saw the ligaments, which I told us the annular ligament, the ulnar collateral ligament, and the radial collateral ligaments. Also the movement, I told us that the movement elbow permits only flexion and extension, flexion an extension only and it is in one plane then the muscles bicep brachii coracle brachialis and brachialis muscle flexes the elbow while tricep brachii extends the elbow then the blood supply is the branches of the brachial artery supplies the elbow then the nerve supply is the musculocutaneous the radial and the ulnar nerve then the bursae, I told us intratendinous olecranon bursae, subtendinous olecranon bursae, and subcutaneous olecranon bursae. Then for the clinicals, we have the dislocation of the elbow, avulsion of the media epicondyle, and also we have the bursitis, that is, which is the inflammation of the bursae. So we've come to the end of this teaching and I'll plead with us to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please, it is important you share this video. Share the video. Make sure you like and comment on the video.
Thank you very much.